Hello everyone, Matt here from Code Tech and Tutorials. Just going to walk you guys through some bit set in C++ and how to use bit set. And just as this is just the basics. Stay tuned for part two if you, know, you want to see a little more advanced stuff. So we're just going to go straight to it and walk through some code. I assume you know how to make a main and compile it if you watch my channel. But if you're confused, uh, you know, feel free to watch some intro stuff on the C++ series or something. I don't know. You'll figure it out. You can always ask in the comments or join the Discord. Or if you really want some one-on-one -on -one help, join the Patreon. All right. Well, without further ado, let's get on with it. So if you're going to use BitSet, if you're in Windows 2 or using a Windows a Windows compiler, like you just need just BitSet. If you're on Linux or Mac OS, you're probably using GCC or something or Clang, and you might need one of these includes. So uh, there you go. Uh, we're going to type dev a few things just to not type standard all the time. Basically, uh, the C out, we're just going to be log and end line. We're going to use end log. Of course, we're using string and IO stream. String actually comes in bit set. Uh, we can take a look by just pressing F12, or if you want to go into the header however you want to, you can. Apparently, it doesn't find it. But uh, if you do find it, you'll see that they use string because it's uh, defined in one of their functions. Anyway, let's continue. So the standard way to use a bit set is to just type standard bit set and then however many bits you want as your type. I'm just going to call that 32 bit. Basically, anytime I type this, it's going to be uh, this. So you can probably figure that out from, from that. And the same thing with string. I'm just doing this to avoid typing the standard, basically, all, all over this following code. All right. So first of all, let's just, uh, I guess, run this and walk through it. So I'm just going to go ahead and run it. I've already got it set up. And there are all the results. Bring it over to the side, bring this here. And hopefully this is visible enough. I know it looks a little messy, but we'll get through this. All right. So first of all, let's talk about converting decimal numbers to binary. This is very easy. You just take your decimal number and you call it with uh, one of these types. Put it into one of these types. If you want to see it in whatever, however many bits, that's what you put it in. And I've ran this a bunch of times here. I've uh, set the number to zero and uh, then set it to show as eight bits. And you can see that here, All right at the top. Integer zero as eight bit binary equivalent, all zeros. And then we plus 128, so now number should be 128. What's that look like? As you would expect in eight bits, the very first bit is set and the rest are zeros. That's uh, it's 128 in binary, all right. And uh, let's go up 64 more and show it. And uh, you'll see the next slot down is a 1, as would be expected by the binary math. And so on and so forth. You can see all the examples. It spits them all out. And we do get to something interesting once we hit 256. Okay, so we see 255 is all 1s in 8-bit. And then once we go to 256, it overflows. And these are all zeros. So, you know, it looks like this, except there's one more digit that you can't see. So if we cast it as a 16-bit... Uh, there, then it overflows to something that we can actually see. So you got to be careful about the sizes. 8 bit, 8 bits is only uh, 0 through 250. That's an integer, as you can see here. And uh, that's all we're going to cover for that. That's just something you can do if you want to get some visualization, basically. But uh, that's that's more for demo form. Yeah, you can look at all the others you want and compare and check and make sure it's correct. It should be. But let's continue on. So the next thing we do is we make a 32 bit set. And we're just calling it set one, and then we're going to display it, and we'll see it is all zeros. That's the default on these. If you don't set them, these are all zeros. Now, we're going to do the any function. Any returns true if anything is at least a one. It returns false otherwise. And you can see that since this is all zeros, any is false. And uh, then we're going to use the none function, another function you can call on your bit sets. And none will return true if everything's a zero, otherwise false. And you can see that that returns true as none are set, that is true. And count counts the number that are set. So you can see here, count to zero because they're all zeros. And then you can do a size minus count to see how many are zeros. The size gets the size of this thing. Of course, it's going to be 32 and count's going to subtract how many are ones. So you can essentially get how many zeros that way size minus count and uh, there you can see that is, is 32 zeros as would be expected. All right, so let's do some other examples. Let's make another set and initialize it to the integer 21. So what happens here when you initialize as an integer? Uh, if you if you can manage to get to this header, 
uh, you should be able to even go check if you want. But uh, once you uh, check it out, you'll it'll be pretty clear. It just sets it uh, just like these up here. It just sets it to that number in binary. So 21 is, of course, the famous blackjack number. Uh, it's 10, 10, 1. So we should see that here on set 2. And we do. There at the end is 10, 10, 1. And then we can just do the other same things. We'll do the any check. It's true. The none check. It's false in this case. Uh, three ones on the count. Yep. And how many zeros? 29. Looks good. Let's go on to set 3. You can also use strings with ones and zeros to set these. So just a constructor they've made, which I think is interesting. Um, and we can go take a look at exactly what that does. It just sets it as you would expect. I can't imagine actually using this one in code, but who knows, you might. Yeah, the options there. You can see the rest of these checks on set three look good. Let's go to an 8-bit set and play around. You can also index into these and it starts from the rightmost being zero. So if we set index one, it'll be the second from the right, and we can see uh, that should be there. And then we can also set, there's a second set here, just to kind of initialize things and change index four, which will be from the right, the fifth one over, uh, because it starts at zero from the right. So we set that one as well, and we do a little console out, the same checks, and you can see there's the eight bit set, the any, the none, and uh, the other checks. But we start doing some more operations here just to play around a bit. Uh, let's do a bool representation. So you can do a test and test returns a test on uh, some index will return true or false based on that index. You can see we're just gonna, uh, doing a loop over the size and then checking all of them and you can see we get this here. Now this is starting from the rightmost, so this kind of has it flipped, where this false is here, right? And this true is here. So if you try to go from left to right on both, you're going to be confused. It's because uh, the way we did this. I guess, you know, we could flip this around and start this at the size. Let's do that. And uh, then minus minus here. And you see where this is going. And we do it while i is greater than uh, zero. We also want to do it when i is zero. So we need to make that greater than or equal to for this to work properly uh, the way it's currently set up. So let's go ahead and give this a fresh run. Hit F5 here and we should see that bool array updated. Oh, we have an exception thrown for out of place. Now uh, you should know why this is happening. This size needs to be a minus one because the size is eight, but we can only index from zero to seven. Make sense? Okay. Just the standard of these arrays. So let's run it again. And this time we should get what we expect here. There's the bool representation. And we have now reverse ordered it so that it goes from left to right, from left to right. Do that if you want, or just know that, you know, that's a thing. You probably already know that if you're a programmer, but just thought I'd do a little fix it on the fly. A little, get a little hacking experience, if you will. All right, and then we just do some more stuff. You can call set, set without any, without any index will set everything to one. So set is like set them all, like true to all of them. The default here on set is true. You can also set specific indexes to specific values. Uh, you can see we're setting four to zero and uh, We'll see that there, there's four as zero. And then there's also set without specifying anything and the default is one in that case. So if we set four to its default, it'll be back to all ones as we can see here. And a few more things here, we will reset. Okay, the reset function, yeah, let's, the reset's default is zero. And uh, so you can see if we call reset on position two, Position two is zero. If we call reset in general, it'll set them all to zero, like so. And uh, we can also call flip. There's a flip operation. You can flip one specific bit by calling this position, and you can flip all the bits by just calling it generically with no index. And you can see that in operation, we flip just two. So it goes from all zeros to position two being a one. And if we flip them all after that, uh, only the two is a zero. So that seems to work as expected. 
All right, stay tuned for part two, and we'll do we'll start getting into some mathematical operations. Hope this has helped your understanding of how a bit set works. And uh, happy hacking.